In our Eagles Nest meeting yesterday, we had a great time. We dwelt on restoration. And all through this month, we'll be talking about restoration. God is in the business of restoration. Since the beginning of time, God has been in the business of restoration. After the fall, all he's been doing from Genesis chapter 3 down to Revelation 21, 22, it's all about restoration. He restores us from the soul, from the spirit level. Through the gift of his son, he restores our spirit. He restores the joy of our salvation. He restores our health. Jeremiah 30, 17. He said, I will restore health to you. This morning, anyone sick in your body, I declare restoration upon you. I declare healing upon you this morning. Any infirmity under the sound of my voice, be gone in the name of Jesus. The Father has given me a mandate. He said, heal the sick. I declare you healed in the name of Jesus. May the Lord restore you. Restore your health. Heal your bodies. And he said, I will restore to you the years. That's very hard. That's the hardest part of restoration. To restore years. May the Lord restore years to you. The Lord restores losses. He restores status. The Lord will restore your status. Job 42.10 reminds us. And the Lord restored Job's losses when he prayed for his friends. And then the Lord gave twice as much as he had before. May the Lord restore you. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus Christ. I want you to look at your neighbor in the face and say to your neighbor, I value you. I believe in you. And I love you unconditionally. Love is not based on conditions. Because if it is based on condition, God will not love us. If you love conditionally, you are not loving. Love is unconditional. Hallelujah. You don't take love, you give out. The more you give out, the more you receive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, last week we looked at restoration. We looked at a wonderful story in 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 6, where the Lord restored to the woman called the Shunammite woman who saw a prophet and was able to recognize the prophet. And when you partner with a man of God, You've set yourself up for miracles. That's what the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 11. And so that woman of Shunem, she recognized, she discerned that this is a man of God. She was rich in substance and she keyed in. And from that keen in, her life was preserved. Farming for seven years didn't affect her. When she came back, just the story of how the prophet restored her child that was dead. When the king heard it, he was so impressed. 
what did the king do? Restore to her her house, her land, her properties, and everything. Today we're going to look at restoration, how God restores us in all situations. Restoration for all locations. And I want us to dwell on a few verses of the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's do a little teaching from Isaiah chapter 41. Verse 17. The poor and needy seek water. First, let me explain something here. The stories in the Bible, especially in the New Testament, even in the, in the, in the, in the Old Testament, even in the New Testament, you must understand the location of Israel. Because Israel is an example. Now Israel is located on the earth till date in a desert region. So most of the examples and situations and circumstances have to do with that location. Now, water plays a vital role in the location of Israel. You know, water is life. Water gives sustenance. So, the scripture we're about to read comes out of a time when Israel was in great need, just as we are in great need right now in this nation. The books of the Bible, especially the prophetic books, what do they do? They warn, they prophesy, and they talk about restoration. Today, as you are hearing me, no matter your situation, the water of life coming from God will reach out unto you. Amen. Today, whatever the enemy has stolen, destroyed in your life, God will restore. Amen. God will restore. Amen. I have a proclamation and news. It's news time from here. It's restoration season. Amen. It's restoration time. Now let's do this reading. The poor and needy, they seek water. They seek sustenance. They seek life. But there is none. Oh, this exemplifies our situation right now in Nigeria. We need help. Everything is up. Fuel price is high. And it's rising every day. Electricity is going up. Food in the market is going up. Your sustenance is being threatened. The poor and needy, they seek water, they seek life. But there is none. Their tongues fail for tests. I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I came to let you know the God of Israel is the same God today. I came to announce to you that God will not forsake you. Then God begins to speak. He said, I, God, even though there is no water, I will open rivers in desolate heights and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and the acacia tree, the myrtle and the oil tree, 
and I will set in the desert the cypress trees and the pine and the box tree together. Verse 20. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. And the Holy One of Israel has created it. Let's break down these scriptures one after the other. This word came to the people at a time of great need and I can assure you, I know that we are people who are in great need right now. And the Bible says the poor and the needy. There is no more middle class in Nigeria. Either you're poor and the rich are few. Now, the poor and the needy, it refers to people who have been disfranchised. The people feel that they are nothing. The rich can come up with rules and even if the poor who are the masses of over 97% say, no, we are suffering, they don't care. They feel they are nobodies. When you're driving on the road, they push you out of the road. We feel as if strength has been taken away from them. Hope has been taken away. Comfort has been taken away. The poor and needy, they seek water, but they find none. There is none. No water. The poor and needy are looking for sustenance. They are looking for water. And the Bible says there is none. They are clamoring for help, but there is no help. We are looking for deliverance. We are looking for salvation. Praying and fasting for a turnaround. But the Bible says there is none. In verse 20, the Bible tells us that God came to the rescue and he didn't come because of their need. He came that they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. He does this turn around, this restoration for his own glory. So can God give us supply where there is no water? Can God turn things around? Can God still be mindful of us? Can we trust God when things are so bad? Can we trust God when it's like we don't have hope in a system? You know, a lot of the times when you're praying for a need, if you know someone in a position, a lot of the time your eyes could be, your inner eye anyway, could be in thinking about that person while you're praying to God. You're expecting help from man, but you're praying to God. The poor and the needy, they are thirsty, but there is none, there's no water. And the Bible says in verse 17, I, the Lord, will hear them. I, the Lord, will hear them. When I hear them, I'm going to act. The accumulation of your prayers. I speak under an unction this morning. Like the prayers of Cornelius in Acts chapter 10. They have been accumulated. They have been standing before God as a memorial. 
And in this season of restoration, God is saying, I will open. He didn't say, you will open. He said, I will open. It's like someone has been pushed to the wall. And I can say as a nation, we'll be pushed to the wall. There doesn't seem to be help from anywhere. When we, the more we think about our situation, the more disillusioned we become. It's like everything is hopeless. And God says, I will open. Leaning on a wall, thirsty and needy, looking for sustenance. Suddenly, that very wall that you are leaning on bursts open and water, life, sustenance, favor flows out of it. God is saying, I'm doing this for my own glory. The story here is quite interesting. There are four locations in verse 18. There are four situations in verse 18. Let's look at verse 18. People, what does verse 18 say? He said, I will open rivers in desolate heights and fountains in the midst of what? The valley. I will make the wilderness a pool of what? And the dry land springs of water. There are four different things mentioned. Rivers are different from fountains. Rivers are different from springs. Rivers are different from pool. A mountain is different from a valley. And a wilderness is also different. So let's look at these things. And there is an order of arrangement in this verse 18. Number one. He said, I will open rivers in desolate heights. First, let me comment here. Why these different places? Because God does not reach out to each and everyone with the same issue. God does not reach you or reach me with the same solution. The answers to our prayers are customized. What God will do for you, sir, in your need is different from what he will do for me in my need. They are tailor-made, fashioned after you, fashioned after your situation, fashioned after your location. Hallelujah. So look at this verse properly. It says, I will open rivers in desolate heights. Wow. Rivers are flowing waters. Something is going to flow to somebody's way today. Yeah. Now, heights refers to what? Mountains. Refers to what? Hills. They are mountains. They are in high places. But they are desolate. There are no more trees. There is no more vegetation. The man has been up there. The woman has been up there. Everyone knows your name. Everyone knows your status. But you are desolate right now. Things are not the way it used to be. But people are still looking at you with that same eye. Highs but desolate. In high places. Everybody considers you prosperous. Wealthy. People think that you are still there. You are still doing so well. You were doing well before. There was vegetation around you before. Productivity was around you before. But you have become desolate. 
The economy has made your business desolate. The situation around you has made you, you are up, still up there, but desolate. All eyes are upon you. And the Bible says, I will open rivers. This must be an act of God. Because rivers flow from heights to low. And God is saying, I will open rivers. Don't forget, rivers flow. So he's saying, I'm going to cause a flow to you in that height. Oh, I want you to catch that point. All rivers flow. They flow from a height to a low. You are in a height, but desolate. Everybody thinks you are still there. Everybody thinks you are still up there. Everybody looks at you with that eye. But you know that you are desolate. There is no vegetation. That's the meaning of desolate. That means there's no productivity around you. Height, but no productivity. Height, but poor. On a mountain, on a hill. But you don't have anything that will really befit that height that you are. But you are still there, but desolate. God is saying, I will open rivers in desolate heights. Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. There are only two things that could happen, but I think I prefer the first one. It is by his spirit that he can open a river in that height to flow to you. That means God will, by his spirit, do the opposite of gravity and ensure that the water flows from down to up. It is only an act of God. It is not a common thing. It's an uncommon thing. And I'm going to let someone know God is set to do the unexpected in your life. Amen. The unbelievable in your life. Amen. The unconceivable in your life. Amen. How would you feel if you see water flowing up? And that's what God is saying I'm going to do for somebody. I'm going to do for somebody. I will call that spiritual engineering. Driving water from a low place to a high place. It is only God who can give you help at that height. Number two, he said, and fountains in the midst of the valleys. Wow. What is a fountain? A fountain is a waterhead, a source of water, where a river starts from. It's called a fountain. That's a river you all know, the River Niger. The two rivers that came together. One is the river Benway. It flows all the way from the mountains in Cameroon. Somewhere they call Adamoa Musa in Cameroon. Northern Cameroon. Up on that mountain, the springs of water come up. And then down in Guinea, up in Guinea, the foot of Jolon Heights, springs of water flow. And they form the river Niger. And the river Niger and the river Benue, they come together at Lokoja. And then they flow through and empty themselves through the Niger Delta into the Pacific Ocean. The, this, sorry, the Atlantic Ocean. The river Niger is the third longest river in Africa. After the river Nile and um, the Congo River. This river starts from mountains. Let me come home. There's a river. If you're driving from here to Yenagua, I mean, yes, to um, 
Delta State. You pass through a lot of rivers. You find bridges. First, you're going to pass through the Sombrero River before you enter into Ahoda. The next river you're going to meet is called your Rashi River that crosses you into Imbiama. Then the next river you're going to meet, the one that crosses you into Kayama is the river Non. And then the next river, the river Niger. Let me give an example of the river, the Orashi River, because I grew up in the banks of the Orashi River. And I had a project then to find out the kind of organisms, phytoplanktons, zooplanktons. Sorry, it's not my fault. <laughs> At the source of the river, the Orashi River begins somewhere in Uguta Lake. But we've traced it also that the Orashi River is just a tributary. There are rocks in a community in Imo State called the Azioma community in Imo State. That's where the fountains of the Orashi River comes from and flows into the Uguta Lake and passes through behind Ebema, behind Oba, passes through all the Angana villages and flows down to the end. At a point, it comes together with the Sombrero River and flows into somewhere close to Abonema. Why are you clapping for me? Am I the river? God says, I will open rivers in the heights. I will open fountains in the valley. A fountain, therefore, is a fresh supply. A river flows to you, but a fountain is a fresh supply. When you are up there on the mountain, you are so visible. But when you are in a valley, you are not visible. The situations of life have hidden you. The things around you have kept you obscure, unseen. People have abandoned you. Circumstances have made you irrelevant. God says, I will open fountains. I will cause water to come out from rocks. Fresh water. They might not be as large as a river, but they are very refreshing. I will do a new thing, he says, in your life. He said, even though that new thing is small, do not worry. Keep trusting in me. Keep believing in me. It will become great. Talk about the longest and the largest fresh water body in the world, the Amazon River, beginning from somewhere up a mountain in Peru of over 5,000 kilometers above sea level. The water comes out of those rocks and flows through five nations, spending a lot of its time through Brazil and empties into the Atlantic Ocean. At the point of beginning, it's so small. But right at the point where it empties into the Atlantic Ocean, it is so large, it is so huge, so huge that it's been estimated that the fresh water that comes, it makes sure that the waters around the, in the Atlantic Ocean, around the emptying point, they re still remain fresh for up to 100 kilometers into the uh, Atlantic Ocean. That's to tell you the volume of water that comes. But it started from a fountain. Though your beginning may be small, your refreshing may be small, your later end will increase. God is in the business of restoring you. 
No valley will bury you. In that valley, God will ensure that fountains will arise. You will thrive again. 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 again. The valley will not hide you forever. So somebody under the sound of my voice, you will thrive again. Remember the story of a young man called Melphibosheth. He was in Lodeba. Lodeba means a land that is forgotten. Crippled, hiding in the forgotten land. But one day, one day, just one day, fountains were raised for him. The king sent for him. And from that day, his restoration began. Remember the story. It goes that all that his servant and all his children, many, that they should labor, they should work, they should farm. And all the produce should go to Melphibosheth. God says in that valley, in that lowest place in your life, he will open fountains for you. Amen. The head waters will arise for your sake. Amen. They will trickle down and grow. They will trickle down and water your life. They will trickle down and ensure that you become great again. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus if you are in a valley where there is no help, I came to announce to you, in this season of restoration, God will restore you. Amen. God will restore you. Amen. Whether you are on a mountain and desolate, rivers will be brushed open for you. Amen. Whether you are in a valley forgotten, God will raise a fountain for you. Amen. No one will be left out in the name of Jesus. Amen. But the high and the low will not be left out in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number three, let me run quickly. And I will make the wilderness a pool of water. Wow. Pools are not rivers. Pools are not fountains. In fact, a pool in the wilderness is called oasis. You know the story of Haggai and the son Ishmael. Hear the wordings of Psalm 23. The Bible says, He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. God is able to bring refreshment, to bring waters, to bring still waters. Even to those who are in the wilderness. What is a wilderness? A wilderness is a symbol of emptiness. A place of wandering. Haggai and Ishmael, they were wandering in the wilderness. You could be moving, but you are just going through the motions. You could be here this morning, but you know that you are just going through the motions. I have good news for you. In this wandering, God has provided a pool for you. Amen. You are going to meet a pool of water for you. Amen. A pool of sustenance for you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You know, when you meet a pool, when you're wandering and thirsty, verse 17 says, they are thirsty, they are needy. Wandering in the wilderness. No hope in the wilderness. And suddenly, you see an oasis, a pool of water. It's like saying, I've been waiting for you. I was made here for you. Come, drink of me. Let your soul be restored. I believe today that someone who has been believing, who has been praying, who has been fasting, you're going through all that motions and thinking, when will my help come? 
I have good news for you. There is a pool of water waiting for you. God will provide a pool of water for you. The same God who sent an angel to speak to Haggai and to Ishmael, that same God is your God and is your father. He's saying to you, son, daughter, look up. I have a provision for you. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's water waiting for somebody. In the wilderness. In the wilderness. By the time they got to that place, oh, hey guy was tired. He dropped the child. I don't want to watch her die. You seem to be tired. You seem to be giving up. I have news for you. The same God who caused an angel to tell them, look up there. By the power of the Holy Ghost, may God direct you to see the pool that has been made for you. In the name of Jesus. Let me quickly jump to the last one. And the dry land springs of water. A spring is different from a fountain. A spring is like water gushing out from the earth. The water comes out and rises. The water forces itself out of the ground. God is saying, I will open springs of water. In where? dry places. We all seem to be in dry places. It's like, I can't remember when I had a testimony to share. I can't remember when I had a visitation. I can't remember when God did something for me. I can't remember when last I had a breakthrough. I can't remember when last I had a real good favor. But I have good news for you. It's called a spring of water. A spring of water. Somebody get ready for God's surprise. Amen. God will surprise you in that dry land. Amen. God says there will be a sudden burst of flow of water in your direction. Amen. In the name of Jesus. I want to announce to everyone this morning, God has not abandoned you. Amen. God has not left you abandoned. You could be on the mountain. You could be in the valley. You could be in the wilderness. You could be in a dry place. But God has a set out provision for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. It's like God is a God of geography. He knows everybody's geography. He knows everybody's location. I have news for you. He knows the state of your health. He knows your status. He knows where you stand. He knows your name. He knows even the, the number of hair on your head. He knows your location, whether you're in the heights, whether you're in the valley, whether you're in the wilderness, whether you're on the dry ground. He knows, he knows, he knows, he knows. And God is set to restore you in spite of your location. In the name of Jesus. And what is so beautiful is this. It makes this supply customized. So customized. So customized. So customized. God is saying, even though you could be stuck in the wilderness, I will make a supply of oasis for you. You could be stuck in the heights. You're up there, but desolate. I'll make a supply for you. Whew. Those in the valley, people no longer know that you exist. Your phone no longer rings. Messages no longer come. People just greet you and pass by for the courtesy of greeting. They don't look into your eyes to greet you any longer. They feel you are in the valley and it's over for you. Right in that valley, God will open fountains for you. 
In a dry place, springs will come up. In the mighty name of Jesus, may God minister life and strength to every hearer. May God minister life and strength to every hearer. May you be able to identify the water that is God is raising up for you. Amen. The rivers he will burst open for you. Amen. The fountains he will burst open for you. Amen. Come on, the springs of water that will come up for you. Amen. Verse 20 ends up by saying, so you will see. Come on, get, tell your neighbor you will see. You will see your testimony come true. You will see your expectation come true. Come on. Preach with me. Preach to somebody. Come on. Preach to somebody. You will see your expectation come true. You will see. You will know. You will understand. You will consider that the hand of the Lord has done this. Rise up on your feet. It's restoration time. It's restoration time. You will see it. You will see it. You will see it. It's restoration time. Brother, get set for your restoration. Come on, come on. There is a man in this house I know. God is set to restore you. 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 It's restoration time. It's restoration time. The most painful one is to be on a mountain and desolate. Everybody thinks you have and you don't even have. Nobody is even ready to give to you because they think you have. You can't even beg because of your height. And God says, I'm going to do an act. An act of bringing water. My God, reverse the course of water. Flowing towards you. Get set for restoration in the name of Jesus. Get set for restoration in the name of Jesus. So that you will see and know and consider and understand together. It's only the hand of the Lord. Lift your hands. And the choir was leading us in the song. Restore the years. Restore the losses. Restore my status. Restore my position. My God. I declare restoration in this house. In the name of Jesus. You could be on the mountain. May the Lord restore you. You could be in the valley, may the Lord restore you. You could be wandering in the wilderness, may the Lord restore you. You could be in dry places, may the Lord restore you. In the name of Jesus. Before God does anything, he puts a word in the mouth of his servants. He puts a word in the mouth of his prophets. God has put a prophetic word in my mouth this morning to let you know, no matter your geography, your situation, the Lord will restore you. Get set for restoration. In the name of Jesus. Can somebody say I have a tailor-made customized restoration coming my way. It's customized. It's tailor-made. It's for me alone. It's for me alone. Come on. It's for my situation. My God. My God. It's for me. Father, we thank you. We bless your holy name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ.